Greetings, new California, uh, shoot, I mean, Arizona Rangers. My name is Kamikaze, and I picked up this little game called Wasteland 3 a while ago. I got it during some Steam sale, and it sat in my uninstalled games list for probably months. Finally, though, a couple weeks ago, I was bored, and I was just looking through my Steam library, and I was like, sure, I'll try Wasteland 3, why not? And my god, was it a mistake to have waited this long to play it. I'm not gonna really bury the lead here. This game is badass, all right? I'm gonna go deeper here, but if you don't wanna sit all through that, this game is a banger. Basically a hybrid of XCOM and Baldur's Gate. And then slap a fallout coat of paint over the whole thing. So, you start a new game, you select your difficulty, and then you get plopped into the inevitable character creator, which is very Fallout inspired. Your options for appearances are fairly limited, but I still spent about an hour in there just trying to decide between all of the kind of strategic decisions how I wanted to build my characters. However, this is not just any character creator. This is a special one, because you do not create a character. You create two characters, and then actually you create two more characters basically right after the tutorial for a squad of four. Eventually though, I ended up with Cyanide, a no-nonsense sniper lady with a haunted past, very creative, and Torque, a charismatic mechanic who prefers to try talking her way out of situations, which I mean is at least slightly more creative. And yes, if you're wondering, I did decide to make a whole character because I randomly got assigned the nickname Torque. So, you start the game, and you get a quick exposition dump for those of us who didn't play Wasteland 1 or 2. That's me. It's been a rough few years for the Desert Rangers. When the world ended, they tried to bring some order to what was left of Arizona. Basically, nuclear war, everything's fucked, it's now a hundred years later, and the Arizona Rangers are trying to re-establish law and order in New Mexico. Wait, shit. You, however, are not in Arizona. You are in beautiful, sunny Colorado, on a mission to meet the Patriarch. Someone who has already done the law and order thing, but sent you a message that he now needs your help with some yet undisclosed mission. Now, I want you to consider, if some guy calling himself the patriarch who owns Colorado, quote unquote, asks you to send all of your best troops in exchange for the vague promise of supplies, would that raise some red flags to you? If you said no, you might be a member of the Arizona Rangers because they agree to this with no more than it literally can't go tits up. Your convoy is driving across a frozen lake when several rockets collide with the leading vehicles. Enter the tutorial, where you have to scramble to try and survive this ambush. So at its core, Wasteland 3 is a CRPG. You know, top-down view, you right-click to move, a lot of interacting with stuff and talking to NPCs and some puzzles to solve here and there. Two things really separate this game from the crowd, though. First off, it's in the future. Um, it's kind of a surface level change, but 99% of these games are generic Western fantasy. You know, elves, dwarves, dragons, etc. And the reason for this is because the second thing that separates it is the combat. As soon as you enter a battle with anyone, the game transforms from Baldur's Gate into XCOM a highly tactical, cover-focused, turn-based strategy game. And yes, look, I know Baldur's Gate is also turn-based, but, like, you know what I mean, right? And it's very clear this game wanted to be XCOM. Uh, you could, like, it was built from the ground up on the idea that we want XCOM combat. It's got the same cover system, it's got the exact same UI, like, look at this, alright? I'm not comparing it to XCOM. The game is comparing itself to XCOM. It's got the pulling your hair out when your sniper misses back-to-back 95% shots. Uh, but it actually feels really good for the most part. There are a few issues that pop up later into the game, but early on especially, I was loving this. So, you make your way through the deluge of blood 
and you discover, to my surprise at least, that it was not conducted by the Patriarch. In fact, after surviving this ambush, you make your way to Colorado Springs, where you meet the Patriarch face to face, and he's actually kinda reasonable. Sure, he's an iron-fisted dictator who's up to some incredibly shady shit, but he apologizes, and he admits that the ambush was indeed kinda his fault, although by accident, and then he gives you a big cool military base to say sorry. Because we can't have an XCOM game without base management, can we lads? This is essentially where the real game begins though. The Patriarch tells you he brought you here because his three degenerate children are all conspiring against him and it's your job to go find them, spank their bottoms, and bring them home to daddy. You're then free to go off and explore, complete missions, and do RPG things. And just a side note, this is one of my favorite video game things, uh, like RPGs, where you're, you're given the final mission right away, and you're way too low of a level. I don't know why I like that so much, it's just a me thing, but I like it. However, his kids are all very far away, in different cities. So, allow me to introduce you to your lord and savior, the Kodiak, my beloved. The Kodiak is a big, remote-controlled monster truck with a huge turret on top. This game is, like, kind of semi-open world, and Colorado is a big place, you see. So you need some way to transport your squad from place to place. Between all of the major areas is the world map, a super zoomed-out view where you drive the Kodiak around, free to explore as long as you avoid all of the radiation and giant killer scorpion robots, that is. Not much to say about this, you just you drive around and occasionally there will be some random events you need to deal with. World map is actually something I started to get very annoyed with, um, because the map is pretty big and the Kodiak is very slow, especially before you get any upgrades. And since quests frequently take you between areas, or they ask you to find some, you know, minor location out in the wastes, you spend a lot of time just kind of slowly moseying around out here. There's no fast travel, you see, and fast travel is one of those things I like to complain about until it gets taken away from me. Oh, and I recommend leveling survival on one of your characters. It lets you skip some of the random combat encounters out in the ways. It's technically useless, and I'm sure there'll be some nerds who like to min-max, like, wah, don't put points into survival, but it saves you a lot of time, so eat my ass. The act, you know what? The one fun thing about random encounters out in the waste is that you get to use the Kodiak in combat, and that thing fucks. Speaking of skills, though, let's talk about those. For each character, you've got attributes, skills, and perks. Attributes are basically your character's stats, increasing things like health, move speed, crit chance, etc. Whereas skills are, well, skills. All of the attributes are useful depending on what kind of build you're going for, except coordination. Coordination is good on everyone. More action points are far more valuable than any minor stat increase. Skills are your typical RPG things like lock picking, sneaking, survival, oh, and uh, sniper rifles, explosives, and mechanics. One thing I think this game struggles with a bit is making skills have use in and out of combat, which is something I think great CRPGs do. You know, magic is good in combat, you can like cast fireballs, but also teleportation is good for all kinds of overworld shenanigans. But Turns out it's hard to find a good application for better sale prices in the middle of a firefight. I think the only good example is mechanics, which are helpful for repairing generators and vehicles and stuff outside of combat, while also allowing you to use fun little robot companions in combat. The nice thing about all of this is that it seems like most builds are viable and fairly balanced. Granted, I haven't played on the highest difficulty, but at least on hard, most things felt pretty good. Uh, the only exception was melee. I did try to have a melee ranger for a little bit, but it just felt terrible. I was probably doing it wrong. I don't, I don't like looking up builds or whatever for this type of game. But eventually I just had to give up and respec into brawling. 
which did turn out to be a blessing in disguise because brawling is awesome. And if you're wondering, melee is like bladed weapons and brawling is fist weapons like brass knuckles and they're different and brawling is cool. So I've been talking about how great everything is so far. And I want to stress, I really do like this game, but it's not perfect. The writing in the game is okay. It's a bit of a mixed bag. Some characters are pretty likable, and I think the main story is actually pretty great, and it has some interesting side quests here and there. But that being said, this game just cannot decide if it wants to be this dark, serious game full of, you know, difficult moral dilemmas, or if it wants to be Saints Row 4. There's this whole quest line about a refugee crisis in the main city of Colorado Springs. The city has shut down its borders, but there's this group smuggling in new refugees, and your task was shutting them down. Well, you can choose to do this or not. And you might think helping refugees is good, and you're normally right, but here's the problem. The city is already struggling with overpopulation and a serious food shortage. So, you're forced to make this terrible decision where you have to screw over the refugees trying to escape the violence and the waste, or the people in the city who are already starving to death. I did this whole quest line while wearing a dildo hat that gives plus two penetration. And okay, well, comma, that's your own fault. That's just a silly joke item. You didn't have to equip it. Fair enough. Here's the worst one though, and I'm going to spoil a main story quest that's about halfway through the game. So if you don't want to know anything, uh, avert your ears for a minute. My next main mission was to go and retrieve one of the Patriarch's kids who was working with some gang in the ruins of Denver. I had just finished up a fight that hadn't really gone according to plan though, and my party was looking a bit worse for wear. So I decided to swing through my HQ and heal and regear first. I talked to the doctor, buy some new stuff, uh, talk to some NPCs, whatever, right? As I'm getting ready to leave though, I noticed this new NPC standing next to the entrance named La Perla. And La Perla is a slaver. She's stopped at your HQ to request your help. One of her most valuable slaves has escaped and she wants you to track her down and bring her back. First thought, no, I'm not going to help you. A scorching hot take, slavery is bad. But then, La Perla offers me something. She'll give me the codes to the two secret vaults in my HQ that I had been trying to open for the whole game. Uh-oh. Well, no. You know, surely she's lying, right? How would she know that? And then she gave me the code to one of the two vaults for free. <sighs> no, 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 no way. I'm not gonna help enslave some poor girl. But I am running really low on supplies though. And there was some really cool stuff in that first vault. I, really, it would it would help me save more people if I had, you know, some shiny new guns, but n no, I, I can't, right? In the end, I decided that I was not going to help her, but this game really tries to sucker you into making terrible decisions. So I, I set off in the Kodiak to Denver, and the whole drive I'm thinking about this situation. Did I make the right choice? I think so, but... Man, I am low on ammo and money. I, I hope I'll be able to survive. And, and I let La Perla leave, which didn't make me feel great. And then I arrive in Denver, and I am immediately treated to a cutscene of a communist robot being judged and executed by a giant laser shooting statue of Ronald Reagan. Ronnie, are you ready to begin the trial? Yes, Nancy. Uh, present the accused. It is irrelevant whether one is communist. Communist? Communist? For the hippie, no one can be denied the promise that is, well, America. Let's give her a second chance. Uh, oh, the gods of the sky is devouring. Uh, thus is justice done in America. God bless us, and God bless God, President Reagan. 
this game is a tonal catastrophe. I'm not saying your serious game can't have silly moments or vice versa, but going from tough moral choices about slavery to laser shooting God President Ronald Reagan is jarring to say the least. Look, I'm gonna move on, but goddamn. Since I'm here, I might as well bring up the other major issue that I had with this game. As the game carries on, the RPG elements start to clash with the strategy combat. As you gain XP and level up, you level up your character's skills. And in typical RPG fashion, to get the most powerful weapons, you have to be good in a particular skill. If you want to use the best sniper rifles, you have to put all of your points specializing into sniper rifles, right? Thus, you have to put all of your points into just a few skills, and you can only take a few guns on each character. And since it costs you a ton of money to respec your characters, the game basically discourages you from trying new stuff, which is like the whole point of a strategy game. And yes, I can sub out my current rangers for new ones, but I've spent the last 20 hours doing quests with them, and now I'm attached. And this also means that you're probably just going to find your preferred strategy fairly early on, and just stick with it. And the game never really throws any curveballs to make you switch it up drastically. That's something that XCOM in particular is really good at. It encourages you to find your playstyle, and then constantly finds ways to screw you up, either by new enemy types, or new mission types, or, uh-oh, your best sniper just got murdered and now you don't have a good replacement. I really wish this game would let you respect for free, but then that would let you cheese all of the dialogue and overworld puzzles. Oh, you found a safe you can't pick? Well, let me just zip back to base, respect, and come open it. So. I don't really have a solution here, but it is a problem, I think. And I'll just throw it in here, but I, I also wish there was more enemy variety in the game. Um, for the most part, every faction is a melee dude, a ranged dude, a sniper dude, and a flamethrower dude. Uh, there are a few exceptions here or there, but those are mostly reserved for boss fights. And 90% of the fights are just those four enemies with different skins. The other combat thing that started to really annoy me is the armor mechanic. Um, but this might just be a me thing. So, every enemy has an armor stat, and your weapons have a penetration stat. Pause for laughter. If your pen is higher than their armor, you do full damage. But if their armor is higher, your weapons do reduced damage proportional to how much higher the armor is. The problem is, I didn't get any better weapons. I don't know if I'm unlucky, or if I suck at exploring, but from like level 9 to level 20, I got like no upgrades. I found one shop that would sell me better weapons at the Ronald Reagan place, but without spoiling it, I did a thing that made them mad, and then the shopkeeper refused to speak to me. And from that point on, I was trying to kill enemies with like 25 armor with my 11 pen weapons, so all of my damage was being reduced by like 60%. And this uh, really just made things a drag for a while. The, the combat was just miserable for a good few hours of the game. It was, it was brutal. Now, you can reduce armor with your strike abilities, which are weapon abilities that you have to charge up over time. But they take a long time to charge. So I was mostly just, you know, hitting the bad guys with pea shooters. And it sucks because I actually really liked this mechanic at the beginning of the game when only some of the enemies had armor. Because then it made you have to choose, do I use my strike abilities to reduce the armor on these guys or do I use it for big damage on the unarmored guys? And it was an interesting strategic decision. But at a certain point, I found I was just only ever using the armor reduction option. I, like, never did anything else. Eventually, though, I did 
find a couple better assault rifles and then some more weapons after that and the game did start to open back up a bit but that it really ruined a good chunk of the mid game for me even as the combat started to drag a bit though the main story was enough for me to stick around the whole time i was invested enough to want to see how it ends uh, it's funny because i went into this game looking for an xcom style strategy game and i didn't really care about the rpg stuff but by the end, I was exactly the opposite. I wanted to get the fights over with so I could get to the next story bit. This is a good game. Not a perfect one, but I recommend it for anybody who likes RPGs or strategy games. Uh, it, it And I think this game did well, so I'm sure we'll eventually get a Wasteland 4. And I think with a few minor changes to like the leveling system and stuff, it could be pretty amazing. So that does it for me. Uh, if you've already played Wasteland 3, let me know what you think. Uh, otherwise, please subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed, and I'll have more videos coming soon. Goodbye. Communist.